I'm going to show you how I implemented the specialized audio into a VR game using Unity, Wise, and the Oculus Specializer plugin. First, we're going to download everything we need. Then, we're going to import the audio into a Wise project to implement it. We're going to integrate this Wise project into the game that we have in Unity to lastly integrate all the music individually. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Merlin's Conundrum is a VR puzzle game where you need to save the kingdom of Camelot by casting a series of spells. But in order to find the necessary ingredients to cast each spell, you need to solve a riddle. When composing music for this game, I took advantage of the virtual reality nature of it, and I decided to use music to literally guide the player through the game. I achieved this by attaching instruments and musical motifs to elements of the puzzle. This way, they will emit a sound that will serve as auditory help for the player. So the things you're going to need for this is your game, of course. If you haven't started, then you download either Unity, Unreal, or the game engine you want. I'm going to leave the links in the description. You need to have WISE as well. Uh, you download it for Windows or Mac. The link is also in the description. And then you will need the Oculus Specializer for WISE. This is the Oculus own plugin that is made specifically for WISE and it allows you to have specialization of sources of sound that are mono or stereo. So you have all the instructions here on, on how to go ahead and install it. Lastly, you're going to need your music tracks. I have them here. The naming is a bit cumbersome, but it has a reason to be and it's really important and it saves you a lot of time if you do it this way. It all starts with MC. This is the title of the game. This is Merlin's Conundrum. AH is my name, Amadeus Herrera, because if you are working in a team, you want them to know what files you've sent. MUS, because this is music. FNL, because it's, this is the final file. Then is the name. Let's do this one here. Sandwich Theme Harp. It is the part of the game is being used, what it is, and what instrument in this case. Then you have the bits per minutes. This is 80 BPM and the time signature, this is 2-4. All of them are the same in this case. Sometimes you have a variety of BPMs and time signatures. And then this L8M tells you the length of the file. The length is 8 measures. So your file is going to be good for 8 measures. But then the next one, this is the controversial one, the P. Sometimes it's pre-entry, sometimes it's post-exit. You need to get an agreement with the developers so everybody's on the same page. In this case, this is pre-entry. So it has one measure of information before the eight bars. And then this is version 1.1. One, one. So essentially this file was made just once and that's it. Let's go and do our WISE project. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to open our WISE project. As you can see here, we're going to go to the layout designer or we can just click F5. And here in the tab of audio, we're going to go to the interactive music hierarchy and we're going to create a new work unit. This work unit is going to be called music. We're going to start creating a bunch of child elements that are going to be music playlist containers. We're going to create six of them and we're going to start naming them according to the spells. In the game, there's different spells. The first one we need to solve is the gemstone. So it's going to be called gemstone spell and this is going to be the clarinet. We'll do it again new child element and as you can see here is the shortcut is control shift alt and then a y this is gemstone underscore spell is going to be the boy and as we said before control alt shift y gemstone spell violin once again control alt shift y gemstone spell harp gemstone and amulet the bass and we have two more harps so let's do those amulet spell harp and sandwich spell harp okay so the next step is to import our audio files. But since each one of these containers is going to have one, maximum two tracks, so I'm going to import everything in a folder and then I'm going to assign it to each container. So right click, import audio files, add folders, and I have it here in the project music files, select folder. We're going to import all of these as music segments into a virtual folder. Now we have them here. Now I'm going to assign each one to their container. So I'm going to fast forward here. And then I'm just going to erase the folder because it's of no use any longer. Okay, but why do we have different music containers for each track if we want to play them in synchrony? Let's not forget that this is just one track and each of the stems represents a different element in the game. So we want each one of these to be routed out as an individual exit. 
The alternative would be to have them in the same one and then root individual tracks, but I found it easier to work with them this way. The trick is going to be, when integrating it to the game, to initialize playback of all the elements at the same time, but that's easy to do. Okay, so let's check out the name of the tracks. Just as a quick reminder, everything is at 80 ppm and is in 2.4 time signature. So let's go and add those over here. So this is 80 and time signature is 2.4. We're going to do the same for all of them. So I'll fast forward. Okay, so all of them are eight measures long and they have a pickup bar of one measure. So let's go and set in the music segments the entry and exit cues. So we need to move this one, one measure to the right, but as you can see, everything moves together. So what we need to do is to hold control and move it one measure to the right. There you go. For the exit cue, we don't need to hold control. Just put it there. And I'm going to repeat this for all the elements. So I'll again, fast forward. Okay, the only exception is going to be our bass line because it consists of two elements. It has a bassoon and a double bass. So what we want to do is to have both music tracks in the same. So we're going to delete this one. And now, if we check the music segment, we have both here. We're going to do the same where we move back. Okay. We now have both elements there. One is the bassoon and the other one is the double bass. What we want to do now is to have the bassoon playing occasionally. So we don't want the bassoon all the time, but we do want the bass line to be consistent and playing all the time. So we're going to add some subtracts to the bassoon line. So we're going to right click and we're going to do a random step. Now it changed to blue and we're going to add subtracts. I'm going to add two and we're going to put the music actually in the middle. That means that it has one in three chances of, of being played. Let's give it a try. That's only the bass line. Let's do it once again, but let's start from here. There you go. Now you have the bassoon as well. And again. Now you have just the bass. If you want to test when the bassoon is on, for example, or not, you can click here on force usage. That means that every time that you play, here in Y, it's not in the game, it's going to play this stem. But we don't want that now. Now, all the music tracks are set up. As I was telling you, the bass is going to be heard all the time. So we don't want to specialize this one. If you get here in the general settings, in the output bus, this is going to go to the master audio bus. We're not going to move anything here. And later we're going to, to place this into the camera. So you're going to listen to it as, as background music. But for the rest, we want to put them in a space. So now we're going to start to specialize these elements. For this, we need to do a few things. So first we're going to select, let's start with the amulet spell ARP. And we're going to go up here where it says general settings, then to the positioning tab. In this case, we want the listener relative routing to be position plus orientation, that's going to be a 100%. Then we need some attenuation. It's set to none. We're going to define some attenuation, but we're going to use shared assets. We're going to use a new attenuation. It's going to be called attenuation distance. And you can see it down here. This is volume versus distance. And this is in game units. This is reducing the volume with the distance in a linear fashion. For my game, I found that around four or five units is effective. So I'm going to double click on the line and then I'm going to drop it and I'm going to zoom in. So this amulet spell harp is one of the tracks that is going to define an area in the game. So I'm going to leave this on five. So that means that if I am five units away from my object, I will no longer be hearing the, the music. And I'm going to use a cone use. This is going to help me 
tell if I am to the right or to the left or even behind the object. You can, if you want, add a low pass filter or high pass filter is sometimes useful, but in this case, it's not necessary for this game. And we're going to add this one to all the ones that says harp. Same stuff, you share assets, and we're going to do this one. And we have one more harp, same stuff, share assets, attenuation distance. There you go. We're going to do something similar for the instruments that are going to be the parts of the spell, but I want to have those with a bit of a different attenuation, so same. Use share assets, we're going to get a new one, it's going to be attenuation, spell ingredients. I want the music to be inaudible before, so same stuff. Just double click and a bit before five. Just so you have to be closer to the object to pick up the melody and the music. You say cone. I'm not going to add any more attenuation settings. And also for your game, you can mess with these parameters right here. For my game, this is too useful. And I'm going to apply it to the bow and to the violin. This one is not going to have any because it's going to be always in your head. So we can turn up the attenuation or not. I mean, if there's nothing selected here, it, it won't make a difference. Now we need to add a new routing boost. So we're going to go on the left into the master mixer hierarchy. We have the default work unit, and then we have a master audio bus. Underneath that, we need a child that is going to be an audio bus as well. We're going to call this 3D because this is the one we're going to be using for the spatialization. Now that we have it, we go to general settings, bus configuration, and we're going to configure it same as parent. And then we're going to go to the mixer plugin. Here is where we're going to use the Oculus Specializer. We're going to use the default one. And if you click in those three buttons, you can see all the parameters that you can adjust there. In my game, I won't use the native panning. I'm going to enable the early reflections and I'm going to enable some reverberation. Then you can move this parameter to fit your game. We're going to go back to the specialized objects, general settings tab, and instead of routing them through the master bus, we're going to do that through the 3D. We're going to do the same for all of them, but our bass and bassoon, remember. Okay, so we have everything set up. We have the routing buses, the master audio bus and the 3D bus with the Oculus Specializer plugin in. And we have all of our tracks routed through them, 3D and the bass through the audio master bus. We have also the positioning with attenuation that we can see down here. We also have the listener relative routing set to position and orientation. Okay, so now we need to make some events to actually trigger and play your music. We're going to go to the events tab and here in the events, the file work unit, we're going to start adding them. So a new child and then we have an event. This is control shift alt E for event. We're going to call them play underscore and what it is so we're going to play the gemstone violin for example and so on so i'm going to fast forward and we're also going to add one that is going to be stop the gemstone items because when you finish the riddle those elements are going to be destroyed and we need to stop the music and now we need to add an action so let's start from bottom to the top so we're going to start with the sandwich harp we click on it and here on the right we have the action list so we're going to add a play the target is empty so we can browse it then we're going to go to music and we need to have it match. So the sandwich harp, okay. So it's going to play. I'm going to fast forward again. Okay, so this is one of the places where you can do things differently. For example, you start the game and you are in the entrance and the first thing you listen to is this, this instrument. One can argue that you can start 
the violin and the clarinet over here by adding more actions. That way, you can guarantee that they're going to play in synchrony. However, I found that by having separate events for each one of them, you have more control. I mean, this is sincerely up to you. And then the last one is the stop. We're going to add an event, but in this case, it's going to be stop. It's not going to be stop all because that will stop everything that is playing here. But what we want to stop, and in this case, we're going to select multiple, is the ingredients or the items. So we're going to stop the clarinet. We're going to stop the violin and we're going to stop the oboe. That way you finish the, the puzzle, these items disappear and they will stop playing, but you won't lose the sound related music that is this three here. And you're also not going to lose the always present bass line. Okay, now we need to create a sound bank. Same default work unit, or you can create a new work unit if you want. We're going to add a sound bank and it's going to be called music. You click on, on the sound bank and now you're going to add from this list here below, you're going to add all the events. We're going to change layout. So we're going to go to the sound bank layout. You can click here or you can press F7. And now we're going to assign the sound bank to actually the game we're going to generate the sound bank. So you click on it. Here I just have Windows, but you click the platform that you need. You click the language and you generate the sound bank and everything is ready. Now we're going to integrate this project into the Unity game. So now it's time to integrate WISE into Unity. In case you don't know how to do this, you need to launch your Adobe Connected Launcher that you see here on screen and on the left. You have home projects, WISE, plugins, Unity, Unreal, and so on. So in this case, the game I made it with Unreal, so you click on there. It shows you the list of games that you have there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select one that doesn't have uh, any WISE integration yet. So this VR room, you click here with integrate WISE into project. It gives you this screen. I have Unity open now, so you have to close it when doing this. You select here the version you want to use and the platform you're going to, to deploy it. In this case, I have Apple and Microsoft. Then you select your project path. In this case, I'm just going to do it very quick for demonstration purposes and the Unity installation. And then you select that you install files into a copy of the Unity project. I have an issue here that not all the platforms selected above, these ones here, are currently installing WISE. You will want to click on this button and then install the packages that you're missing and then you click on integrate and that's pretty much it. I'm not going to do this because I have already integrated into the project that I'm showing you. Okay, now you open your Unity project and you open your WISE project that I have down here in a different screen. Down below, next to the project console, you have this new tab that is the WISE speaker. You open it and it says connected. This is only going to say connected if you have both projects open at the same time. If not, this is going to show you disconnected and then you have to open the WISE project. Down here, you have the events. Now in this case, I have more events because this is the actual WISE project that I integrate. It has the sound effects. The one we built before it just has some of the music. That's why you can see more, more stuff in here. Also here on the hierarchy in the scene, you are going to find this WISE global game object usually has this AK initializer. This AK uh, scripts are the ones from Audio Kinectic, that's AK. That's the ones that you're going to be using to play or stop your events within WISE. If you don't have the AK initializer, you add it add a component and then so on. But this is automatically ported when you integrate WISE. So one of the things we want to do is to start playing the music right away. I'm going to go and select my main camera that you see here, and I'm going to add this AK audio listener. So add component, then you go AK, and then you have all the, all the options there. Audio listener, you find it there. But then every time that you add an AK component to your game objects, an AK game object is going to be added by default. If this doesn't happen, you're going to have a message telling you that AK game object is necessary, so you add it. We have our AK initializer. We have our audio listener in the main camera. So I've added a game manager here on the hierarchy. And in this game manager, 
I'm going to be loading the sound banks that we've created before. So you add this AK bank component, and then here where it says name, you select the bank. We've created a bank named music before, but as I told you, this project has the music and the sound effects. So this one, I call it main, but it's the same one. You select it, and then we're going to load it on awake, and we're going to load it on destroy. That means that as soon as the game opens, the bank is going to be loaded in memory. So now we have everything to actually start playing some music. We're going to add this one that is called an AK event. And remember, when you add an AK script, you're going to be using also an AK game object. I'm going to trigger this one on start. You can trigger it also on awake. And you're going to call for the event that you have on your list here. In this case, it's play the gemstone and amulet bass. This is the music that is not going to be specialized. So it's going to be playing all the time. So now when you start the game, you're going to start listening to this bass and bassoon duo. So we're going to start with the music regions first. We have three. The first one is this one here. The second one is going to be this one here. And the last one is going to be all the way here where it looks like a dungeon. So to do that, I'm going to select a few objects and I'm going to attach the instruments to them. So I'm going to look for the ones I already selected. This one on the first bookshelf needs, of course, the AK game object, but we're going to use now a script that is called AK ambient. This is the one that is going to be using the attenuations that we set up before. We're going to select the gemstone arp and we're going to play it on awake. The one that is in the next bookcase is going to be the same. So it's got the AK game object. It's got the AK ambient on awake, but this one is going to play the amulet harp. And the last one in the dungeon is going to play on awake and is going to play the sandwich harp. So that way, we're going to have all of our regions with a different ambient music according to the meaning they have in the game. The next thing we want to do is to add the melodic elements to the ingredients that we're going to be using to cast the spells. In this case, we're going to be using this ancient book. Same as before, you need your AK game object and we're going to attach an AK ambient script to them on awake and it's going to play the violin. There is a scarlet potion that is going to be same, but now this one is going to play the clarinet and the last one is a golden bar. This one is going to play the gemstone bow. Remember that these ones have a smaller radius than the ambient music tracks, so the player will need to step closer to them to, to know they are there. But then we need to stop these three elements at some point. So I added this AK event. I decided to add this to the gold bar just because I had to put it somewhere. This one is going to be triggered on destroy because when you cast the spell, these three elements, these three ingredients are going to disappear. They're going to be destroyed. So when the gold bar is destroyed, it's going to play this event the one that says stop gemstone items. So these three are going to be stopped, but area specific arpeggios are going to keep playing the same as the base. We're going to repeat this a few more times for the different puzzles that are going to be in this game. And that's it. Thank you for watching. That's it for today. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you the next time.